Hey, how you doing? You like my whales? So I already tried to make this video once, but Adam Neely made a way better version of it. So I'll link his video down below and he'll explain the finer details of why this case against Ed Sheeran is, well, how my English friends would say, daft. Okay, I don't know if they would say that, but um, this, this lawsuit's stupid. Let me emphasize this point because I'm going to keep referencing it. You can't copyright harmony. You can't copyright harmony. All together now. You, you can't, can't copyright, copyright harmony. harmony. Now that we have that straight, let's talk about the lawsuit itself in a nutshell. Again, visit Adam Neely's YouTube channel or Rick Beato's YouTube channel if you want finer details on this case because they're really smart. Ed Sheeran is being sued for $100 million in, and I think this is a hilarious litigation lexicon, damages. $100 million in damages. You've damaged me. You will pay $100 million. Here's the deal. The heirs of the Townsend estate, Mr. Townsend being the man who wrote Let's Get It On, have alleged willful infringement on Sheeran's part. Their statement in 2016 when this lawsuit was first opened was this. The harmonic progressions, melodic and rhythmic elements, as observed in Let's Get It On, have made it one of the most well-known and instantly recognizable songs in R&B history. These elements are the heart, or qualitatively, the most important elements of the song as indicated by critical acclaim. So this lawsuit was already filed and subsequently withdrawn in 2016 after no elements of plagiarism were found. Hmm. But it has been reopened by a company in New York called Structured Asset Sales, SAS. Seems like a wholesome, well-to-do company, wouldn't you say? This is the message I want to convey about ass, I mean SAS, who has intervened in this lawsuit to grab money, I mean, uh, to represent the Townsend estate. This isn't a lawsuit about protecting a classic R&B hit from copyright infringement. This is a business move. To claim that you have been irreparably harmed and suffered damage is, hold on, let me use a big word because that seems to convince people of stuff. Contemptuous. That type of language is disrespectful to people who actually have real problems. So on behalf of everyone with half a brain or more, let me just say to the Townsend estate and their representation, we don't feel bad for you. Here's the real issue. This lawsuit suggests that a song released over 40 years ago will face financial damages as if millions of people were still buying it today. It also suggests that since Ed Sheeran's song now exists, we'll never listen to Let's Get It On ever again. I have a question though. There have been countless songs released over the decades that share the exact same chord progression as the songs in question, and yet the Townsend estate has neglected to release the hounds on them. What gives? I wonder if it has anything to do with the fact that Thinking Out Loud has garnered 2.3 billion views on YouTube and the album it's on, X, has sold more than 15 million copies. Hmm. When Robin Thicke and Pharrell Williams were forced to pay over $5 million to Marvin Gaye's estate, it was an ominous moment for the music industry. With rampant piracy, declining digital sales, and the ongoing battle of adapting to the constant motion and evolution of streaming and online business in general, the fear of infringement is needless anxiety that musicians face, and it exists only due to money-grubbing scumbags whose musical taste begins and ends before a chord is even played. Look, I'm not saying copyright infringement laws shouldn't exist. They should. They're important. But this particular instance is setting an unacceptable precedent. It's a clear extortion of those copyright laws. And the sad part is, the argument presented in court by ass, I mean SAS, is literally incorrect from a perspective of musicians with a higher education, like Adam Neely, Rick Beato, myself, and countless others. As SAS says, and I quote, in Gay's song, this chord progression within the backing pattern occurs in the key of E flat. And in Sheeran's song, the progression occurs in D major. Listeners will hear the two progressions as functionally equivalent. Many listeners will not recognize that Frank Sinatra sang my way in D major while Elvis Presley sang that song in C major. It is clearly the same song despite the difference in key. This argument is referencing harmony. All together now, you, you can't, can't copyright, copyright harmony. harmony. If I went to the stand in a courtroom and strung together an agglomeration of bombastic, long-winded, loquacious verbiage with the intention to glaze over the eyes of the jury rather than bequeath the imperforate truth, it'd be pretty easy to say these two songs are similar, but guess what? They have no melodic similarities. And that's what's protected under law. Melodies, not chords. You can't 
copyright harmony.